Hey there, how's it going? Tim Warner here, welcoming you to this short video called Three Tips to Gain Entry-Level Employment with Microsoft Azure. You familiar with the old chicken and egg problem? Did the chicken come first before the egg or did the egg form and then the chicken? Well, to apply this to Microsoft Azure in general and your IT career success in particular, <laughs> you may have run into the problem, and it's no laughing matter, I understand, that you need a job in the industry working with Microsoft Azure in order to build your practical skills and experience with the technology and with your target job role. You also find, unfortunately, that most job posts require practical skills and experience. So there is the chicken and egg problem. Assuming that you're new to IT, or maybe you're not new to IT, but you're new to Microsoft Azure, and you're interested in obtaining entry-level employment with Azure, how do you cross this bridge? That is the problem that I'm looking to solve in this video. And I'm not going to give you the suggestion to seek unpaid internships. That may work fine if you're privileged enough, maybe in college or in school, where you can afford to do that. But I'm assuming you're looking for gainful, compensated employment. Let's proceed. The first of the three tips, and this is by far the most important one, is for you to practice professional networking. Now, I say professional networking and not social networking, although there is somewhat of an overlap. Specifically, I submit that you need your first break to get into a Microsoft Azure job role. Specifically, I mean you need to find somebody in an organization who's willing to take a chance on you. Maybe they've seen, looking at your track record and through the interview process, that you're willing to learn, you're open-minded, you're really eager, you're willing to accept a job that may not have the salary that comes with a mid-career or a senior level role, that you're willing to put in the reps, as my friend Mike Pfeiffer from CloudSkills.io often says, in order to earn your place in the industry. I submit that by expanding your professional network, you inherently expand your job potential and your job possibilities. I have to say, I've been in the IT industry about 22 years. The vast majority, I would say at least 80% of the full-time, part-time, and consulting roles that I've had came about through professional networking. That's how important I believe this is. Now, how do you practice professional networking, practically speaking? One is to immerse yourself in your chosen community. I'm a Microsoft specialist, and I'm assuming you're interested in Microsoft Azure. So I'm now encouraging you to attend technology user groups and discussion forums. Go to meetup.com and look for Microsoft Azure user groups. One thing that technology user groups has as an advantage over online discussion forums is that you're doing face-to-face -face communication, live communication with other technical professionals. And one thing about the pandemic that's good, I can't believe I'm saying that, but the fact that these user groups are all on Zoom or Microsoft Teams, so you can attend these groups all over the world and meet a lot of people. Guess who shows up to technology user groups? People who are interested in filling job roles, sometimes entry level. Guess who else attends technology? user groups, IT recruiters who may very well have entry-level roles there, and lastly, you'll meet colleagues and maybe eventually they'll become personal friends. And the idea is, if and when they hear of an opening, you've already got a connection to these people, so there you go. Another way to practice professional networking, and all of this is stuff from my own experience, 100%, is to engage with IT practitioners you admire on Twitter, LinkedIn. Don't be afraid to contact them. However, I want to strongly suggest that you be both polite and genuine. Let me jump ahead to my last bullet point. Being aggressive and being desperate, for lack of a better term, generally speaking, is a turnoff. I find that sincerity, fortunately, I'm so grateful to say this, comes natural to me because I'm a curious person and I'm not the most social person in the world for sure, but I love to talk shop with fellow IT professionals. So you see here, by going to LinkedIn and making connections and same thing on Twitter, the Microsoft technical community has a huge presence on Twitter. Just engage with people and develop a rapport. And the idea, if your experience will mirror mine at all, is that as some of these colleagues, friends, acquaintances, however you want to associate them, learn of job openings, you want to be the person that they think of first. Professional networking. And IT recruiters, uh, I don't know much about that game because I'm not a salesperson and hope I never will be one. No offense against IT recruiters, of course. I imagine that they get bigger commissions when they recruit senior level positions. But by engaging with IT recruiters and practicing your people skills, that's a little foreshadowing to tip three, you develop that relationship. You want to be a person that they think of first off 
off when a job role crosses their desk. Again, I can't overstate, be polite, be genuine. This isn't about looking to use people. It's to form genuine, meaningful, professional, and maybe even personal relationships with fellow IT professionals. Tip two of three is get certified. Now, if you've looked at my work before, you probably know that I've been a certification specialist for many years. So you may think, well, yeah, Tim, it's in your best interest to promote certification. Not so fast. Not so fast. I've benefited from Microsoft certification every bit as much as anybody else, regardless of their job role. One thing from a hiring manager's perspective, you having earned one or more Azure certifications demonstrates your commitment in terms of time, effort, and money. And I always say that by pursuing one or more of these Azure role-based certifications, it provides a great opportunity, call it an excuse, to deep dive into the subject matter. Because ultimately, let's face it, once you get your big break, that is, once you're able to cross that initial door and have a company take a chance on you for an entry-level position, then the rubber meets the road and you need to do the work. And I've found that first hurdle is by far the most difficult because once you start rolling in that entry-level position, you are gaining valuable hands-on practical skills and the next time around you're ready to make a job move you have solid tangible experience so you should never hopefully have to cross that initial bridge of getting your first big break a second time another advantage of certification is that you're differentiating yourself from the competition if it comes down to just you and one other candidate and you're certified and they're not I would submit that having that certification is an extra nod in your direction to denote your commitment Lastly, many businesses have a hard requirement for certification. Government agencies, anybody in the Microsoft Partner Network, depending upon how the partner wants to certify themselves, they have to have a certain number of employees who are certified. And if you've already done that, you're saving the business money and you're saving them time and effort because you've already done that, you see? Third skill, I would say just as important as the first, is to focus specifically on sharpening your people skills. Yeah, 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 you might say. No, it's more than yeah, yeah, yeah. This is critical stuff. I'm talking about stuff that to some might be common sense, but to others, these might be kind of foreign concepts. That's why I'm doing this video. I'm talking about following up politely with contacts. In my experience, human resources departments are notoriously unreliable at getting back to you. It's up to you to track all of your contacts. I use an email service called Boomerang, and along with my Gmail box, it allows me to schedule returns. So if I don't hear from somebody after a certain number of days, I get a message back in my inbox and that helps me not have to keep track of this all in my little brain you see what I mean so following up not letting issues or outstanding questions slip through the cracks but again balancing this and not being aggressive peering for appointments promptly again this kind of simple stuff makes a huge difference in my experience and I have experience on both sides of the desk as a hiring manager as well as a job candidate if you make an appointment with somebody whether it's a zoom call in person telephone be there on time or a little bit early after an engagement, make sure to follow up and thank the people that interviewed you. These people skills go a long way because ultimately, if the company does take a chance on you and brings you on for an entry-level position, you're going to have to work with them. They're going to have to work with you. So that notion of cultural fit is more than a buzzword. It's, in my experience, over 20-something years, reality really is. Lastly, there's demonstrating a growth mindset. I hesitated putting that term in because it's such a cliche, but I'm going to take it at its essential. A growth mindset. This means things like accepting feedback gracefully and gratefully, more particularly using, say, a job opportunity that doesn't pan out, not as an excuse to go drinking or get depressed, but as an opportunity to do it better the next time. Do an after action review with yourself or with your mentor or trusted friends and look at what went great and what went not so great with that failed job opportunity and leverage those learnings into your next interview. It's all cumulative, I've found. As far as book references, I'm going to give you three books that have benefited me over the years. One would be Melanie Dodaro's LinkedIn Unlocked. She is a guru on LinkedIn, and you want to absolutely have a solid LinkedIn profile as well as a nice curriculum, Vita, resume, whatever you want to call it. Short link I've created is timw.info slash el1. Number two, how to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. This is a really old book. I hesitate just a tiny bit recommending it because it's used by sales teams still in 2021. And when you look at it through a salesperson's point of view, again, no shade to sales necessarily. The tips in it can come across as somewhat manipulative. But I submit that if you read this book with a growth mindset, you'll find that it's much easier to engage with people. Things 
small talk, etc. And I myself was diagnosed on the autism spectrum not too long ago. So small talk historically for me is something I work at. And this book gave me some good advice. That's timw.info slash el2. Lastly, there's Microsoft Press's ExamRef AZ900 Second Edition by Jim Cheshire. Books are, in general, not a great fit for Microsoft Azure because Azure moves so quickly. But of all the ground-level books to get you familiar holistically with Azure to the point where you can carry on an intelligent conversation with somebody about Azure, I suggest Jim's book. And I was heavily involved in both the first and second edition of this book as Jim's technical editor. So I can vouch for every word in the volume. I think it's great. Short link is timw.info slash el3. All right. Well, there you have it. I hope that you found this video insightful. Keep in touch if you'd like to. I'm on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. I'm a full-time staff author at Pluralsight. My training there, you can find at timw.info ps. My personal website is techtrainertim.com. All the best to you. Take good care.